Fine sense on the road last Sunday. Andre Rothman at the service line for the Seminoles, and we are underway with an ace from the sophomore Andre Rothman. And that is not something that the Seminoles necessarily do proficiently. Second to last in the ACC in aces per set for a team that leads the nation in hitting percentage. Can't give them points from the service line on. From the outside, Otene dug out cross court. Roof down, and a point for Florida State. This is the height advantage at the net. Going up, you have Koenig, who touches 10-8 over Suarez. Georgia Tech shorter setter getting the front row play right now. Andre Koenig, 20 kills in 33 swings, a 576 hitting percentage in that win over North Carolina State as they go middle. Lunging dig by Droskovic. Chance for Florida State to start quick with that cross-court swing. It sails long from Snyder, and Georgia Tech is on the board. On that swing, Georgia Tech got a nice setup on Snyder, taking that a little wide and trying to avoid the block. And Michelle Collier did say her team needs to rediscover its form at the service line. Have not served well their last two matches. Suarez. Bent through the middle, big dig by Pimentel, but long. And boy, get used to that, out of the middle. That's Corey Lewis, the middle blocker, is second in the nation with a 470 hitting percentage. If you can get Lewis the ball, you're going to be lethal at the net. For Georgia Tech, you have to serve tougher because if Seminoles are sticking passes, they're going to find that middle attack. Georgia Tech starts off at a 6-2. It'll be a free ball for Florida State. Snyder finds a scene cross court 4 1 Seminoles. This is the beauty about experienced players. Snyder took that one inside hard cut shot to recognize where the defender was on the now her second attack, shifting her line to go to the deep corner. Service error by Philly Mawa. And it's 4 2 Florida State. And Michelle Collier has also played a lot more players as they try to find lineup patterns and combinations that will help them withstand the absence of Mogridge, which is not something that Michelle Collier typically likes to do. From the pin, change of pace by Bertolino, dug out nicely. Snyder, the left-hander. And kept airborne by Otene. Played over. A reset for the Seminoles. So they go short through the middle and detonated on by Lewis. Beg your pardon, that's Kiri Roby, the Atlanta native. Woo. You know Roby wants to go hard. This is the Seminole offense that we're talking about. You're seeing it. It's a little slower pace on the pin attack right now, trying to get that right side established. And then when you go to the middle, it's a light out kill. Roby making the home count of the native of Atlanta. And the transit from Oregon. Suarez with the back feed, and Mendez gets it off the outside hand of the block. One of the better freshman outside hitters in the ACC, Larissa Mendez. Mendez plays with two Olympians in her hometown team, so she's used to going up against a big block, and Koenig put one up, but Mendez working the hands to get that tool. Into the season high, 17 kills in that five-set win versus Florida State. Layout dig by Pimentel. Bertolino turned back. Oh, today from the back. A layout dig by the Seminoles. Joust at the pin, and we'll have a net violation point to Georgia Tech. What you'll see with Georgia Tech, they're smart attackers. So you see Otene and Bianca Bertolino trying to play the first ball on the setter to take her out of the offense. What a dig trying to pick that up, but it was the attack to take the setter out cause yeah. that point. Mentel is going to be in the lot of fire today, but fourth in the ACC and digs per set. Swing from the back is long, and it's a one-point first set. And you see it all started with a pass. You got Pimentel putting a nice serve. That caused the ball to go back row for that attack. If you're a senior from Rio de Janeiro, Paolo Pimentel. Forcing Florida State to start deep. Suarez. Jump sir, jump set. Did it catch hands? It did. Florida State doesn't believe so. We'll see if Chris Poole wields the challenge card. As it stands, a 3-0 Georgia Tech run, making 4-0 now. And the Yellow Jackets grab their first lead. This is Bianca Bertolino's game. Give her a tall block. She can work the high hands. <laughs> Into the net from Pimentel. 
60th all-time meeting between Tech and Florida State. Georgia Tech, as we noted, has won the last seven. Prior to that, FSU had claimed seven straight. Teams met twice last year. Georgia Tech won in five in Tallahassee and swept the Seminoles at O'Keefe in the regular season finale. Oh, cheeky from the middle by Roby. Just pure trust and confidence. That are feeling going off the net, knowing Roby was going to come off. That's a force from about 12 feet back. That is how it's done with the center middle connection. They're not always thundering it from the middle. Got a little finesse there as well, but the errant serve ties it at seven. There's a setter rule when you're teaching setters. In system, jump set opposite of your middle, out of system, force the middle. And that was really far out of system <laughs> for Phelan to get that set back. Substitution. And Bella D'Amico will serve it up. The All-ACC setter, and she gets an ace. Bella D'Amico, preseason All-ACC, Keely. Michelle Collier said she needs a lot more consistency from her because when she's dialed in, this Georgia Tech offense reaches another level. Turned away, but tooled for the point from Roby. You're right. So you have Georgia Tech running a two-setter offense. You have D'Amico Suarez getting some action. Mixing it up, this is the depth that Georgia Tech has this year. Multiple players to go to. And when you have a setter like D'Amico with so much experience, you have to try to find a way to get her on the court. Out of the date. Kept up. Right back to Bertolino as she crushes it cross court. Kept up off the support beam and we play on. All oh, the slide handled well. And powered it down. Lewis finishes it off for FSU. You can see Florida State's game plan right now. Any pass that you get somewhat close that you can set the middle, you force her. Roby going up, getting another kill, hitting that cutback. Great set, Phelan. Coming off 11 kills, four blocks in the win versus NC State. Otene flying through, points Florida State. That was the right idea. Just a little miscontact on the hands from D'Amico, but the right idea hitting that back row attack with Otene. And Florida State regains the 10-8 lead. Make it 11-8. As Pimentel unable to handle that serve from Roby. The Atlanta native in fine early form. And this is where you need to take advantage on the pass to attack because you have Libero out for the Mawa on the bench right now. Overpass, tapped over, kept up by Florida State. Pimentel with the dig and crushed. <laughs> That's Rothman and Florida State has regained its bearings. A four point lead forces a Michelle Collier timeout. It is the net game that's dominant for Florida State right now. Anything close, that ball is going straight to the floor. So a timeout midway through our opening set in Atlanta. Florida State up four. Off its potency in this first set, leading the nation in hitting percentage, but facing the Georgia Tech team, Keely, that gets it done on defense. Second in the ACC in opponent hitting percentage. Just lethal, you'll see in it, but it, the block for Georgia Tech needs to slow down this middle attack because if both Roby and Lewis are going off, guys, it's going to be a fast match for the Seminoles. And Roby and Lewis have combined five kills in seven attacks. Woo. What do you think that conversation was inside the Yellow Jackets huddle? We have to serve tougher. You, and keep taking out the setter on, if you don't have the shot defensively. D'Amico feeds Otene. It's a rejected from the middle. Another opportunity, and Bear Toledo be punched over by the Seminoles. And that one hit off the hands and wide. Afedo Magnon, New Georgia Tech, middle blocker. And Florida State extends the run to 6-0. I know Pierce that wants that one back in that middle attack, just missing her hand contact on it. Otene has to reach back for it. Florida State's defense has been really sharp to begin. Uh, they were 14th in the nation, or in the uh, ACC, in opponent hitting percentage. But right now, it is all Seminoles in the opening set. Georgia Tech just trying to find offense, putting Suarez back in to hopefully get that setter hitter connection going for Tech. Because right now, you have Seminoles doing it on the block end and offensively. 
Tech hitting just 118. And another free ball for the Seminoles. Just not handling the Seminoles serve. Tapped over and down. That was Suarez. Clever touch by the freshman from Brazil. In previous matches, we called her caffeine. A little caffeine off the bench. You got Suarez doing the late move to Ooh. get that tip back well, I like to zone that. four. Now she is going to give a quick set to Pierce and send right over the shoulder to snap the 7 0 Florida State run. The big swinger from the service line is Baird Tolino. And here is Baird Tolino flying in for the point. Well, if they're trying to chip away at this Florida State lead, they've got the person they want at the service line, and that's the person in your screen, Bianca Bertolino. One thing, if you look back in stats throughout the season, it's different players stepping up for Georgia Tech. They're deep in their offense, and you see Bertolino really showing up on that service line in the attack. Well, a timeout quickly called by Chris Poole. 14-10, Florida State in the first set. It was a shaky star for the Seminoles this season. Still not receiving any votes in the national polls, but that may be due to change with this 6-0 ACC start and in search of their first win in their last eight tries against Georgia Tech. And you're getting a pretty good snapshot here midway through the first set, Keeley, of what makes Florida State so dynamic offensively, what makes them the nation's leader in hitting percentage. It's their ability to match their jump height with their power and shots on the attack. So you have the Seminoles going up with all different heights, ranging from 10-6 to 10-10, overpowering. For the Seminoles, it's all about the pass. You know, Coach Poole is talking in this timeout saying, guys, let's stick the pass and then go with it. These are the two outsides and two middles. Check it out. You got Audrey's are your outsides. You have Roby and Lewis in the middle. The jump touch is insane. So when you get a pass at the net, that ball is going down. Yeah, it's going down. This is not coming back up. <laughs> Both teams had 75 kills in their five set wins on Sunday. Florida State 372 against North Carolina State. Aaron Tolino leads the ACC fourth in the nation. And aces per set, 39 and counting for the junior from Argentina. <laughs> Blast off. Oh, but an opportunity off the overpass. Florida State reloads. They want a double contact instead. Another joust at the net, pushed over. Here's Suarez up for Otene. And she finds the soft spot. Oh! We have a match on our hands. This is great volleyball. ACC at its finest. Otene with the final kill, but strong block and defense, and Jortek going nice and flat outside to Otene through that seam. Otene, like we said, a 20-kill, 20 20-dig 20 performance in the win versus Virginia, only fifth player in program history with a 20-20. That one wide, and the run continues for Georgia Tech. Now a 4-0 spurt. It is the service game. I'm from Bertolino changing things. You got three service and then out of a timeout. You, there was no icing of this server, but Bianca Bertolino locked in. He's swinging away and punched down by O today, making a one point match. After talking to Coach Collier, in the, she said, we spent a lot of time on the service line. We're back in our home court. The last two weekends we played on the road. We spent a lot of time to get our service game back, and you are seeing the fruits of that labor. Well, she talked about slowing down Florida State from the service line, although Bertolino sends that into the net. Only Bianca Bertolino, the one who can stop a 5-0 Georgia Tech run. The Seminoles can exhale. And Bertolino, in spite of having a double-double versus Virginia in that five-setter Sunday, not a single ace. First time she had gone without an ace since the season opener. Didn't get an ace on that rotation, but certainly caused her fair share of headaches for Florida State. As Otene runs into it, clipped a knuckle, throw to take the point. Otene is so clever with her hand control. That one, she did not put so much top spin on it, but hit it half like a floater to try to make the defender touch it and cause that whiff out of bounds. Oh, today the senior from Auckland, New Zealand, 13th player in program history with the 2020 match. 
Searching for her 10th season double-double tonight. Liz Patterson now a serve for Georgia Tech. Overpass. Easy pickings. Otene. And we're tied. Good job training and serving. Georgia Tech's looking great on that service line in the first set. The matchup across the net that you're going to look for is you have Otene going up, owning the net. But watch Suarez against Rothman outside. They're trying to get a pass and get that matchup. Slide attack. Well read. Cross court by Mendez. Otene once more with the cut shot. Great dig by Rothman. Great dig by Patterson. Here comes Mendez. Block touch. And that is wide. And Georgia Tech continues this run. They've given up a 7-0 Florida State run now on a 7-1 run. And the Yellow Jackets take the lead. For Georgia Tech, it was all about defensive execution. Discipline on your block. Getting your defense around it. And that's causing the missed shots for Florida State. Just couldn't guide that over the tape. Tied at 16 as Patterson comes out. Pimentel re-enters. Well, we said this was going to be close and competitive, and we're getting both here in set number one. Chris Poole has seen plenty of both in his distinguished career. Mendez has to lunge for it. Mendez, can she make something of it? Florida State through the middle, and is that wide? It was, but it caught hands. That ball is so fast to the floor in transition. Getting up is Lewis. She's one of the 10-10 jumpers. You throw that ball high enough, that's going to go down faster than you know yeah. it. It is never too high for Corey Lewis. Second team all ACC a year ago, joust at the net. And point, Florida State. You can see for both teams. So you get a good serve. You get that ball to the middle for Florida State. The Georgia Tech is running all over the place. They're not able to connect offensively. So the pass and serve game is really starting the point. Otene, point tech. There you go. What you just saw, Andy, the pass. You got Suarez at the net, hitting that jump set. You get that seam if you got a jump set to give Otene options. That one, she decided to take line off the hands. Fifth kill of the first set by Tamara Otene. Suarez tries to tee it up and cannot hit the corner. In Brazil, you say fora, I think. Fora, just a little out. Nah. <laughs> Now it's a third service error of the set for Georgia Tech. Two-point Florida State lead trying to become the first to set. 20. Make it a fourth, beg your pardon. Otene cranks it. Long. Otene trying to take that rip. It's one of those high hand shots to the deep corner. She was hoping for hands, but just hitting that ball a little higher than she wanted. And timeout, Georgia Tech, Florida State 20. Georgia Tech 17, credit Florida State for regaining its composure after Georgia Tech had retaken the lead. Yeah, Florida State's been just executing. After that run by Bertolino on the service line, Florida State settle into their serve and then block at the net causing Georgia Tech to really get out of system, not able to connect. Yeah, I think we're getting an, an early peek at what might be the difference in this game, the consistency on serve-receive. That, that's sort of the story right now in the first set. You are right, because with Florida State, you get those middles involved. It just takes, not only it's a point, but it's a emotional point, because that ball goes straight down to the floor that you're like, oh, they can do this type of offense, and Florida State's walking with their chest high, like, yep, we're number one in the nation with our hitting percentage. It wasn't too long ago that Georgia Tech was among the nation's leaders in hitting percentage. And I think when you saw you're facing a team that's at the top of the nation, you can't afford a mistake. It, it just puts a lot of mental pressure on you to really be precise in your system, in your passing, because you give Florida State enough opportunities when you're hitting 321 as a team. It's only a matter of time. You are right, and both of these teams win five sets in their last three matches. Yeah. So they both know how to pull off a long match. And I think, Andy, right now we got Florida State getting the advantage in the first one. Can Georgia Tech emotionally recover through this to even bounce back in this set? Georgia Tech has not lost many first sets this season. Billy Mawa gets the ace. Well, I regret to inform the folks in Atlanta we've got a Philly 
in the building. <laughs> Kylie yes. Philly Mawa, the freshman, makes it 21 17 FSU. Big side out right there because Philly Mawa taking a major role in for Emory due to his out with a knee injury. Preseason found her way as Libro stepping up playing major points this season. Second on the Seminoles and Aces as well. Shelby Collier wanted to double touch. Bertolino. Block touch from FSU. They go wide. Bertolino put some smoke on that. Almost from a standstill, too. One thing that's so fun to watch about Bertolino is the power in her hand contact. It's like all wrist muscles are engaged. Watch her come up and just thump the ball, and you, it's like a one-on-one -on -one opportunity with the defender. Her power is evil. Well, Aaron serve by Otene makes it 22-19 Florida State. And guess who's coming in the front row? You got Phelan, who's been dishing about 12 feet off the net, getting her middles involved. She's going to be fun to watch. Well, between Philly Mawa Phelan, they're a phenomenal freshman. We're logging heavy court time for Chris Poole. And Phelan to serve. Almost got an ace. It turned into a free ball, though. Points. Looks like on a net violation for Georgia Tech. And it's 23 19. The Seminoles went through injuries throughout, had an injury at Florida, injury at Duke, but the last four matches, the starters have been together, and you're really seeing the fruits of that labor coming all clicking on all ends right now in the first set. Yeah, they have found some cohesion. You can tell they're playing with a lot of belief and confidence in the system. There's a good feeling when you're the underdog coming into a match. You have no pressure, you just play your game. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Florida State would share that sentiment that they're an underdog. Mendez down the line, rattles it through the hands for the point. Andy, you are completely right. It's been injuries. The only reason the Seminoles have lost matches is just injuries or people out with COVID or sickness. And now they're all back and strong. They look at their ACC record undefeated. They're not looking at the RPI ranking. Mm -hmm. And that'll come around if they keep playing the way they have. Quick set, Pimentel, crouching dig. Bertolino makes it a two-point set. What caused the middle blocker to hold was Otene's approach in the back row. So you saw the middle just hold enough. Watch her go. Hold, and then that seam for Bertolino to rip it. And this is nine digs for Paolo Pimentel. And she'll serve it in to the net to make it set point. And Michelle Collier said, we need to put pressure on Florida State from the service line, but the Yellow Jackets doing themselves no favors. Pierce blocked and down for set point. Here Roby climbing the ladder to deny the Yellow Jackets and claim set one 25-21. Right now, let's take a look at Mogridge, native Floridian, as the serve by Suarez begins set number two. Quick set handled by the Jackets. Mendez takes something off and down the line for the first point. And you heard Georgia Tech's entire team yelling at Mendez, line, line, line. Seeing that shot was open going deep, it was open court. Larissa Mendez, the freshman from Fort Lesa, Brazil, she was huge in the fifth set of that nail-biter versus Virginia. Wow. A swing by Koenig. Andre Koenig only had one set, or one kill in that first set. Bertolino turned away. She'll reload from the pin, cut it down the line. Vilamawa plays it up. Toskovic plays it over. Oh, and an off-platform set results in the block and the point from the pin, and it's Rothman. Rothman going up and getting that solo. When Florida State's block is set up or anything tight, hands are coming over in your face. Right there, Rothman all over it. Yeah, not much Mendez could have done with it. Andre Rothman, a tied a career high, five aces versus Georgia Tech last year. 
And that one wide on the line. You can see the strategy for the Seminoles shifting. Early on, they were serving Bertolino, and now they shifted the service game right at Pimentel, Georgia Tech's Libro. Bertolino. Ooh. Pimentel. Oh, nothing that <laughs> she could do about it. Corey Lewis with another terminal swing from the middle. That was a professional volleyball point. So you had a strong serve and then stick in the point is Philomau and then go into your middle for the put away power shot. Corey Lewis is hitting 513 in the ACC as Mendez muscles it through the block to put Georgia Tech ahead. This is what you expect from top teams, the ability to bounce back. You got Mendez locked in saying, I got a line shot. Let me take a little off that go cut shot. Two kills in the set, four for the bats. Double touch by Suarez gives Florida State the point. That was a great dig by Bertolino. Nice and high. A lot of times if you don't hand prep as a setter for high balls, it's physics. The ball comes down heavier for that pop out of your hands as a setter. Suarez just couldn't handle it. Not at three. Kenna Phelan. What a story. Her family, her mom Jessica, played for Chris Poole when he was the head coach at Arkansas was his first ABC All-American in 1997. Georgia Tech tries to go through the middle. Florida State is all over it. Roby recognizing the shot Pierce was going for and just pounced on it, taking that straight down on the block. Roby, 70 blocks coming in. That is 28 more than the next highest knoll. Coming off six blocks versus North Carolina State. Had a dozen blocks against Virginia Tech last month. Long. So exciting. So you have a missed serve. You're like, Georgia Tech just happy to get that side out as they figure out their offense still. Oh, Mendez. Awkward serve receive. Opportunity for Georgia Tech as they go cross court. Otene. Layout dig by Philomawa. And <laughs> nothing. That you can do about that Koenig swinging like the ACC Offensive Player of the Week. Billy Mawa picking up major digs, sticking passes, stepping into that Libra role and owning her play right now. Great job stepping in for your team. These are the side out from Koenig. He's fourth in the ACC in kills. Five consecutive double doubles for the junior from Wesley Chapel, Florida, with the service here ties us at five. So the game you're seeing from both sides right now, can you get your middles involved? For Georgia Tech, it's not working. You need to get your middles involved to open up the pin attack. For the Seminoles, that's where your offense is just, it's automatic. Set, hit, kill. Yeah. Chris Poole doesn't have to like this. He's given Georgia Tech three points this set already on service errors. And we're tied at five. Mendez, can it dot it, Georgia, uh, Georgia Tech gives up the point. When I watch setters and when I played, you always watch which setters have that middle connection, can feel it, and you're watching one that is connecting on all cylinders. Phelan really knows how to find her middle. Jump set, Bear Toledo. Cross court for the kill. There was no other spot where that ball was going. You have Bianca Bertolino going up on the outside, recognizing the middle. Roby was playing left back. She was like, I know Filamau is out. I'm going to give the ball to the cross court shot, make you try to defend my power. Level at 6, DeAndre Pierce with the service. Transfer from Texas. Change of pace. Bumped over by Otene. Sent deep. Can Georgia Tech keep it up? They will. Florida State trying to take advantage of the scramble. Another layout diving dig. Here's Bertolino. Chance for Georgia Tech to get set. They'll push it over. Big time rally, and it goes the way of the Knowles. Andre Rothman. 
What a scramble going back and forth. Let's just take a moment to appreciate that back row jump set by Libero Filamawa. Just impressive to finish off that point. She plays beach as well, so that hand control is there. Oh, yeah. One of two Seminoles on the squad to play both indoor and outdoor. And a back and forth second set after Florida State claimed the first 25-21. Roskovic. Suarez to Bear Tolino and out. You have to rely on your pin attack right now because George Tech's not really trying to get that setter middle connection going, but that causes that block for Florida State to get an easy read on the setup. You're kind of seeing the effect of not having Liv Modridge and the presence that she provides Georgia Tech. Snyder cranks it down the line. Oh, the left-hander, Maddie Snyder, 6'4", freshman. And she puts the Seminoles ahead by three. The attention to detail, detail on that Audrey Koenig bump set, just on the money. Watch her attention going up right inside the court. Beautiful bump set. Couldn't have been placed any more perfect. Maddie Snyder, who Chris Poole says, tallest left-handed player I've ever had in my career out of Land Lakes, Florida, part of that prized signing class for the Seminoles. Trying to extend a 3-0 run as Mendez flies in, dots the corner. When you play professional volleyball, this is the game that you just saw with Georgia Tech. You have to use your right back attack if you can't get your middle going because that's a way to spread the block on the other side. Mendez doing a great job working that deep corner shot. Georgia Tech having to get creative to, to manipulate the Florida State spacing on defense. Well, we see more of that from the likes of Larissa Mendez. And Luis Suarez. Our ACC Freshman of the Week last week. She gets the ace to put the Jackets within one. This is the time Georgia Tech needs to push. You have Suarez in the back row with the, on the service line right now in a three-hitter offense, a stronger block in the front row for Georgia Tech. Can you get a first strong serve so that Florida State can't set their middle? Coming off 45 assists in the win versus Virginia. Snyder again <laughs> pounds it. I love it when a hitter finds open court on the first swing that she just did off that bump set by Koenig. She's like, oh, I got the line shot. Let me go right back to the same spot, recognizing where it was open. And before Georgia Tech closed down the block. Snyder up to three kills and six attacks. The Seminoles ahead by two. They took number three Florida to five sets back on September the 12th. And then, like you said, had to manage injuries. They had to manage the absence of their head coach due to COVID. Uh, you should never count out a team early in the season because Florida State has ripped off seven in a row. And six of them coming to the ACC. I had been only up by one now, following the side out. Andy, you're so right. You almost want to put in with, like, the RPI ranking. You were like, oh, but this girl was injured. Oh, this starter's back. <laughs> You know, put those little tidbits in there. There Tolino cranks the ace. That is a thing of beauty. Just straight ripping from the back, Bianca Bertolino. This is what we've been seeing all season long. Bianca Bertolino ripping it here in her home court. Feeling comfortable, feeling confident. Fourth in the nation, aces per set. That's her first of the match. Up high, down Ooh. hard again. Suarez across to Mendez. And Chris Poole up off his seat. Will he use a timeout to potentially ice Bertolino? He did that in the first set, and he'll do so in the second. Nice so Georgia Tech, a 3 0 delivery. scoring run ahead 11 to 10. Got to cool down that smoking hot right hand of Bianca Bertolino from the service line. Georgia Tech chasing the set up by one here in the second. Game on her shoulders, rolling with it. Oh, off the tape and the points. Jaroskovic with the one hand tight set save. 
You train that as a setter. Love to see when your middle just has confidence knowing her arms up will arrive. And snapped straight through the middle by Lewis. Tech has had no answers so far for the junior from Tallahassee. Billy Mawa to serve as we're all tied at 11. Mendez gets the point. The last two sets from Suarez to Mendez on the right side. It's been low sets. The ball's hardly clearing the height of the antenna. That creates the seam, and Mendez can win a point when you give her a seam. One freshman to another. And we're seeing Eloise Suarez claim a lot more of the time at center over the all-ACC setter, Beto D'Amico. As Tech earns the point to make it 13-11. I'm sure a coach pool just looking eye in her setter right now. Like, if you get any type of pass, just go middle. Just go middle. <laughs> when in doubt, feed the middle. We'll see if they oblige. Yes, they do. Pimentel gets a hand on it. But Florida State gets the point. You got a little head nod from Coach Pool. Like, there you go. Yep. Nice job, Droskovich, with a great pass going middle attack. 222 ACC wins and counting for that man, Chris Poole. A win tonight will move him within one of tying Jolene Hoover for third most in ACC history. Feeling to serve. Otenay has been somewhat quiet here in the second half as that one twists out wide. She'll get the tool and the point. That's one of those moments when a like, basketball player goes with, up with two hands among two defenders to go and dunk it. Mm -hmm. So you had Otene going up and going power to power. She was ripping it. She was testing your power of your block defense. Defending. Otene wants more. And the point for Tamara Otene. Feeling it is Otene in the second set. It all started with Mendez just really settling things down as she goes back to serve. But Otene ripping the first one with power into the block, and then this one, she's going, you're moving at, on the middle? Let me go and test you. Now, it wasn't just the 2020 that accounted for her fine week. Also had 23 kills in that five-set defeat versus number seven Pittsburgh. Added 13 digs as well. Six in the ACC in kills per set. Georgia Tech has opened up its largest lead of the match. And Mendez floats it long. Coach Collier, I'm sure, doesn't really care about that miss from Mendez because she was like, Mendez, we need you offensively in the back row as an option. So you're going to see that back row attack with Otene on the outside swing if Georgia Tech can get a pass. Like we said, Keely, six service errors for Georgia Tech in the first set. That was their first service error of the second with a service error right back from FSU. Ooh, off the tape and down. Tamara Otene. In that little friendly bounce, you will take it. Right here as a friendly home court bounce. That's the way you train. How low can you go to the net to still clear it? And Otene happy to come up with that ace. That grabbed about as much of the tape as it could and still go over. Didn't just tickle the tape. 17-13 tech, back set. Conley, oh, the pancake by Pimentel. Bertolino dug out by Philly Mawa and Pierce crushes it home. I think Chris Poole wants to use the challenge card. We'll get our first look at the pancake from Pimentel. But for now, the call on the court of Georgia Tech point to make it 18-13. I think it shocked Georgia Tech that the whistle wasn't blown on that one. That, that was a little court bounce with the effort of getting under. And back in my day, without the surveillance of cameras, that ball would be considered up. But now you can get the replay to see the floor bounce. Uh, unless it's very obvious, I have no problem letting the play play out. I, I get that, you know, you may not get the, the call you want if you're the team on the receiving end of it because right. you're not going to get the point, only a no point. 
Well, it's terrific hustle nonetheless by Pimentel. We'll see with the tape. Oh, yeah. Did that hit the court, you think? Yeah, I'm seeing yep. a lot of court on that. But yeah. uh, you've seen effort, so sometimes you can come up with the effort win and get that point still if the coach just decides not to challenge it. Didn't they make that similar rule in football? Like they let a turnover play out and then you can call like they, if it's a touchdown, you can check it out. I, I believe uh, something similar like that happened for uh, Georgia Tech in Miami, which is a story I'm sure Georgia Tech and the Florida State fans don't mind hearing or watching this telecast. Tell yeah. it. I want to hear it. Oh, come on. The forced fumble. Supposed to be. The call on the field stood. Setting the table for a miraculous finish. Call on the field. Uh, the court. Call on the field. So let me think of the last brain. Saturday. Call on the court was a Georgia Tech point. Yeah, call is reversed. On the pancake, it's all about the angle. So sometimes you can see a player's hand and the ball is like hidden behind the hand. So it's a hard call, but I like what you said. Let the ball play out, mm -hmm. use your challenge. You'll keep it if you win it. So 17-14. Pimentel puts it in play. Low, flat. Bear Tolino can't get it over. If it's too tight, you have the hands of Connolly reaching over 6-1 blocker as a senior with experience to get that penetration. Toledo lunging for it. FSU will have to play it from the back line. Oh, today from the back, swooping in and thundering it down. What started that entire play was Bertolino did not have the shot, so she put the her ball on the center to cause that free ball to come back and then allow her teammate, Otene, to put the ball away. Wow, that was clinical from Tamara Otene. 15 jackets. Oh, that hang time in the middle by Lewis, but just couldn't get that through the double block. I think like she was suspended in midair, but Georgia Tech gets the point. Totally right, Andy. She was hanging, hanging the ball, just not able to ride yeah. fast enough. Like we said in the first set, there was no set too high for Corey Lewis. They go right back to her. Block touch. Georgia Tech controls. Bear Tolino. Oh, and it's blocked and catches the plank. Florida State point. Great extra effort with the left hand by Middle Lewis. Watch her on the close getting that finish. That was nice. Lewis, by the way, did not play in their midweek win versus Miami. Was back on the court for their five-setter versus North Carolina State. They go back set Snyder, point Florida State. Droskovich with the serve. Oh, today again. She has been lethal from the back. That is the offense Georgia Tech needs to go to probably a little earlier because out of the back row, Otene is getting a good look on that zone one, that deep corner shot. The yeah, offense has been very sparse from the middle row for Georgia Tech. Find some answers there in the back. Pimentel to the floor, Bear Tolino into the net, dug out. They go to Otene again with a change of pace. Thielen sets up Snyder. Punched up by Otene, now Mendez blocked. It was Rothman along with Lewis. Rothman got all the way over on the line shot from Mendez. Take, took away a lot of court when Mendez was trying to go through that line. And Andy, a two you, were, point set. you were totally right about George Sack not finding middle offense. So right now between both middles, there's only seven attempts mm. of the total 63 setting attempts on the court. So Florida State not just holding strong in the middle, finding the pin attack. Florida State a chance to cut it to one. 
Suarez, there to Lino down the line. Billy Mao is there for the dig. Lewis caught a hand at the tape by Georgia Tech. Now Mendez once more. Off the hands and down, Mendez. Lavoski Mentel first picking up that communication to give a beautiful bump set and then coming back with the cover. Mendez with the put away, but Pimentel saving the play. Marisa Mendez up to 10 kills. High up in the air. Oh, oh and I think Juarez <laughs> may have lost it. Point Florida State and a big one at that. 21-19. They call that the camper, I think. Like you just all stand around and look at it. Oh, like, oh, boy. it's so pretty as the ball drops. Yeah, the old I got it, you take it between Suarez and Otene. A terrific dig from the back by Pimentel. Billy Mao was second on the Seminoles and Aces. Trying to draw this deficit closer. Koenig cooks it long. You can see the strategy for Georgia Tech. When in doubt, take the setter out. If you don't have a shot, or even if you have a strong shot, you try to hit to that right back to cause the offense to be out of sync and for Florida State not to be able to set their middle. Mendez to Bear Tolino. Mal from the standstill hits Koenig. Now Otene gets blocked. Oh, Snyder clutch at the pin to make it two points again. That is definitely a one-on-one -on -one shot. So you have Snyder going up, trying to take away, and you have Otene working her power. Just great penetration. Without a net violation, that ball was, her arms were straight over to take that shot away. That was a solo block at a critical juncture in this second set. Florida State took the first set, 25-21. Mendez. Point tech. When we called the Georgia match, this is what we saw. The low set from the setter to the right side. That's how you pause the seam every single time. So you see Suarez really popping that ball, and then Mendez just has trust with her approach that the ball would arrive. You love to see it, and every time that ball is low, Mendez is getting a kill. Yeah, and Georgia Tech is getting more consistency on that low flat set here in the second. And Suarez comes out. 23-20, Georgia Tech. Koenig. <laughs> they are teeing up Andre Koenig here late in the second, and the junior's been delivering. Showing that 10-8 jump is Koenig going up. Watch how she's over the block. You give her a seam and then inside cut shot. Only high jumpers with a high extension can make a power shot so sharp. Career high 24 kills in the five set win versus Miami last Wednesday. Second team all ACC a year ago makes a 23-21 tech. Swat is up for Mendez. Point tech. Put some smoke on that swing from a tough angle, and she gives Tech set point. You can see the pin attacks just stepping up. Suarez having confidence, Mendez was there. That's that back row option that you need when you're not getting that middle connection going. Nice job, Suarez, mixing it up. Mendez 11 kills, Otene to serve. Set point for Georgia Tech, trying to even things up. Not yet, says Koenig. Rothman going up and yeah, ripping Rothman. it. They all look the same out there. Yeah. The two outside there is even Coach Poole said both of their names are Audrey. We got a nickname and we got AK and Rothman. That time, Rothman taking the rip. Yeah, when in doubt, beat her on Audrey. Good things often follow. There to Lino with the tip. Kept up. Otene can't reach for it, and it's 24-23. 
Just not quite in sync from Suarez. Coach Collier trying to argue a contact on the Seminoles side, but Seminoles happy to come up with that miscommunication, miscontact from Georgia Tech's attack. And Georgia Tech calls timeout. So 24-23, Georgia Tech in the second set. You're in a situation right now where you have a setter in the front row, so and then they're, Georgia Tech's not setting the middle attack. So who do you camp on? You have Bianca Bertolino on the outside, so you're hoping for a missed pass so you can camp on Bertolino on the block. Now Bertolino only five kills in a set and change. They're only hitting 077, but she is still someone that you have to be wary of. These are the smiles when you're the underdog right now, yeah. even though not so much in the ACC because you're undefeated. This is the, your biggest match of the season throughout your test playing a high-ranked team with Florida State, but they're confident. They're playing together and just very structured in what they have. Coach Poole really happy with how his team has stayed together all season long, and you're seeing that in the comeback right now in the second set. Mm -hmm. now Georgia Tech has cut down on the service air. is only one in the second set compared to six in the first set. Playing much cleaner from the line and a point away from even in this set. The seats at O'Keefe Gymnasium are just cosmetic as everybody's standing right now. Suarez over to Bertolino. Lock, tuck, Seminoles. They have a chance to tie this up as they go middle. The dig by Otene. And Georgia Tech evens things up. Bianca Bertolino finishes it off. And we are level at one. Out a packed O'Keefe Gymnasium. The O'Keefe Cauldron is revved up on this Friday night. Underway in the third set. Koenig started to come on late in the second. Unable to put that away. And did he clip the line? It did from Otene. And you saw the shot Otene was going for, and this is something remind your team in the timeout. Florida State's in a 6-2 offense. The setter is always in right back, so go ahead, test the right side of the court, trying to make her play a little bit of the defense. And Chris Poole ties the record shared by many by using his challenge on the first point of the set. That, that ball on the first play, it looked a little, like, possibly that it could have touched. I would love to yeah. see that slow motion again. Chris Poole consulted with his hitters on that side. It's on the far side of the court from him. And they seem pretty convicted that it did not catch some white here. We'll see on the replay. What do you think, Keita Evelyn? You know, that from even the first shot to now, that's probably going to be, I think it's going to stand because I'm not sure there's enough evidence to show that there was enough, there was blue between the white of the line and then the ball. What do you think, Andy? Yeah, I mean, it, it, by maybe the width of a sheet of paper, might have caught the line. But again, this is where you veer into that conclusive evidence territory. And I think from the looks that we've gotten, maybe not enough to overturn the call on the court, but we shall see. And from this shot, so it's all about the angle that you're watching the game from. So in this shot, it's just like the pancake we saw early on. So from this angle where we're sitting, that ball looked like it was out because it touched some blue. But on the inside angle, it's really the question if any part of the ball actually touched some of the white line. Chance both teams to catch their breath a little more here. And the Florida State challenge to open up the third set. Chris Poole, second winningest active head coach in Division I. This team had to weather a skittish start to the season. And 
to go deep into his coaching bag to try to get them treading water, but now that they've gotten more to full strength, they've certainly found uh, the weaponry that will make them a very formidable team as we move through ACC play as they try to reach an NCAA tournament for the 14th time in 15 seasons. And they do give Florida State the point. It is not the last time that I will be wrong on a challenge. Well, from if, if you're only watching the angle that we're seeing on the, our side where we, we sit under the American flag, it looked out. Yeah. But the one where they really zoomed in, it's hard to see if there was enough blue between the white line. So give Florida State the opening salvo in the third set. Boy, Florida State has just put up a wall. Two nothing Seminoles. You are right, owning the block. You had seven blocks coming into the third set, and that was just that was two shutdowns. One finally coming up with the block. What's impressive is how many different Seminoles have recorded blocks. Lewis Roby each have three. Rothman has a couple. Sidney Conley has two. Manny Snyder has one, but. That's that length and that freakish athleticism that we talked about at the top of the broadcast. And you just can't escape it when you're facing Florida State. Georgia Tech finally able to quick set from the middle and get the point and Anna Mosey. We got our first career start versus Wake Forest last Wednesday. And the sophomore puts Tech on the board in the third. Andy, that's exactly what we talked about, that middle connection between sets two and three. Can Georgia Tech establish that? And out on the serve from Bertolino. Boy, Bianca Bertolino, the times that she has served, she could rip off four points, five points in a row, so you feel very good if you're Florida State. You seeing the service there on her first swing. Now Georgia Tech attacking through the middle. Oh, that is what Georgia Tech needed all match long. They were able to pull off the second set without much middle attention. This one out of between sets two and three. Coach Collier says we have to do it. Bozy, get up and be ready. And dialing up a little curveball. Koenig with a soft touch. Pierce felt the ball off her hands on that block for George Tech's middle blocker. Going off the hands, but just backed away because she thought the defender would be there. If you just stay in that, you got that easied up. If Audrey Koenig, a fifth kill of the night. On a streak of five consecutive double-doubles with the back-to-back -back ACC Offensive Player of the Week. And the Seminoles and kills a year ago had a double-double against Georgia Tech last year when they met twice. Once again, Georgia Tech just pounded away up the middle. Pure execution right now. This takes a lot of pressure off of Georgia Tech's pin attack between Otene, Bianca Bertolino, and Mendez going, okay, we can get Pierce going. In addition to Bozy in the middle, good things are happening. Yeah, this is clearly not by accident. Michelle Collier drew up. Juarez beats Otene, pushes it down the line. Now Koenig, she's starting to feel it. <laughs> Koenig with 24 kills last week in a career high. You are right, Andy, feeling it with that type of pounding from about five feet off the net. Makes it five, three Seminoles. Overpass on the serve. Make it 6 3 Knowles. Suarez got that easy tip shot back to the, it's called zone four, the inside left side of the court. This one, you do it once, but against experience, you can't do it twice. Rothman lines it up. Demon tell there for the dig. Otene gets the point.
point off the touch. Andy, this is why it's so important to have a middle attack. Because if not, it's easy to set up a block on your outside. This because Pierce is going in the middle. Otene was able to have a one-on-one -on -one high hand situation going with a left hand touch of Roby. Yeah, bent the fingers of Roby to make it 6-4 Florida State. Otene, and that one didn't find hands, no. Well, and, and with Georgia Tech, clearly they were trying to steal some points through the middle. And I'm sure Michelle Coldier and her staff realized that the match would not have been sustainable for them offensively if they didn't try to work a, a middle attack every now and again because you knew the Florida State would be loading up on the outside. So see if that may pay dividends for Georgia Tech as this third set rolls on. But right now chasing three points and quickly 8-4. As the serve receive, it getting shaky for the Jackets. Volleyball strategy is a lot like football strategy. You run it to pass, open up your passing game. You pass it to open up your running game. You have to play the accordion game, mix it up, because it's easy for the defense to get set up if you just choose one. Bertolino trying to attack cross court. Bertolino blocked. Rothman and Conley and Michelle Collier forced to use an early timeout. Florida State with a resounding start to this third block. Jordan Tech still without one. Eight of those nine blocks coming with a middle on the close or even getting a solo. Both Corey, excuse me, yeah, Roby and Lewis stepping up big time. And Corey Lewis, five blocks. Georgia Tech goes to the slide attack. Hold that onto the back pocket and Pierce puts it down. It's all about the strategy. You can see Coach Kobe shifting between sets two and three. We have to do something less predictable, getting Pierce and Bozy involved in the middle. Wow. Some velocity on that one from Sydney Conley. The lone four-year senior on this Florida State team, the senior from Oviedo, Florida. Pretty impressive set by Phelan going right on the money. And then the line shot by Conley slightly off the body control that still take it line. Beautiful. And a season high nine kills in their win versus Duke. Florida State off to its best ACC start since 2015 in search of a fourth 7-0 start in the ACC in program history. And another ball handling air on Georgia Tech. Make it 11-5. It's one of those moments in the set before it slips away that Coach Coley needs, needs to look at Swatter is like, okay, that's enough. You've done enough middle connection. Mm -hmm. Now let's light it up on the pin attack. Yeah, don't stray from what got you that second set. Right to the pin, Bertolino. If I didn't know any better, Keely, I'd say you had some coaching in your background. <laughs> a little bit. Probably more playing than I ever coached. Only a couple years in college. But you saw a great pass. And then Suarez going low out to Bertolino. Not giving her enough time for the block to close on that set. Beautifully done. Bianca Bertolino, a seventh kill to go along with her five digs. is on the serve. Snyder blocked, kept up by Lewis, joust at the net, Florida State the point. And Michelle Collier marching right over to the challenge card. She see a net violation? She is, I think she saw a net violation, but more importantly, she's hoping for the net violation because Georgia Tech cannot buy a block right now. You have Mendez going up one-on-one -on -one with, with a joust situation, and Florida State still getting coming up with it. And we'll see if there was a hand on a net or a toe on a line. So are you suggesting this is more of a hopeful challenge for Michelle Collier? From our view, we're right behind the up official, so we didn't get a really good look of what's going on, what happened on the Florida State side. It did look like Mendez got a little net coming down on this. Ooh, 
Ooh, or you might get a replay, Andy, even better. Because that was a lot of net bouncing off the net. I mean, it's not a lot of ball bouncing off the net. Mendez for Georgia Tech, Rothman for Florida State. And possibly the right hand from Rothman as she came down. But that's super tight that it's almost yeah. like, I'm not sure. But yeah, it looks like it. Looks like there was a touch. It looks like there was a right hand net violation on Rothman. So there are two choices right now. You can call a replay because it definitely wasn't Mendez in the net. You saw Mendez completely out of the net, or you're calling Rothman a net violation with her right arm. Well, I'm 0 for 1 in uh, challenge predictions this set, so I'm going to abstain. <laughs> <laughs> Colin DeCor was Florida State point. And take it off the board, give it to Georgia Tech. The best part this season about the challenge call, if you win it, you get to keep it. And you love it. Just using it, seeing the game, Coach Cole went right to it without hesitation. Make it 11 to seven, Florida State. Just to take a look at Rothman. What a pick up by that man, Chris Poole, USA Today Girls Volleyball Player of the Year at Spain Park High in Birmingham, Alabama. Alabama Gatorade Player of the Year as a senior. First team high school All-American. On the serve received and on the kill. She made that clinical. You almost have to do a full commit because when you go one-on-one -on -one between Rothman or Koenig on the outside, they are connecting, high jumping, just cutting that ball with a little seam. They're coming up with the kill. Rothman now to serve. Suarez to Mendez. That was closed down well. Snyder. That is a laser-guided left hand from Maddie Snyder, the freshman. And just like that, Florida State jumps ahead six. Sutter Droskovich recognized that her outside was down because that, uh, Koenig picked up the tip and delivered a beautiful back bump set to Snyder for the putaway. Florida State has been in command in the third. See in the first set, Georgia Tech make up a seven point deficit. Briefly regained the lead before the Seminoles took the first set 25 21. But that pressure has been unrelenting from Florida State. Terrific dig by Otene. We'll see what Mendez can do with it. But again, Florida State has been locked in at the net. And a tracer by Mendez for the point. Otenay's defense and then Pimentel picking up two in a row just when you thought the ball was going down. That's how you steal some momentum back. Coming up with the put away swing is Mendez. And don't discount the defense of Tamara Otenay. She's second on the Yellow Jackets and Diggs. And for Larissa Mendez, the team high 13 kills. Wow. Kept up and Pimentel to her feet quickly. Snyder, though, not to be denied. Wow, just when <laughs> I thought Pimentel was making the save, the first one off the noggin, a little high chest, that's all right, and then kept the play going to save it, but just not enough Snyder two in a row putting it away. Yeah, Snyder has been on target from that right side. And overcooked by Koenig. For Florida State, you got to stay with hope because if Georgia Tech feels that you're losing it a little bit with the little missed connections, they are going to ride with it, rely on their experience, the composure on the court. So for Florida State, it's all about this pass to stick it again and maybe get that middle kill going. Loaded across, Koning changes the arm swing. Mendez blocked, double block Snyder and Roby. 
give Florida State a 10 block of the match. And I think Shelly Collier wants that challenge up again. And she spotted that violation. Well, what can't please Michelle Collier, and I think it, it, to a degree, Keely, it's unfair to put that much pressure on one person, but Bianca Bertolino has had two rotations from the service line in this third set. Georgia Tech has not gotten a single point out of them. For somebody who is fourth in the nation in aces per set, even if you don't get the A's, you put so much pressure on a defense. You could single-handedly run off three, four points in a row just with the strength of Bianca Bertolino's swing. Two rotations, no points for Georgia Tech. Those are missed opportunities. I agree that they rely heavily on the run that Bianca Bertolino can produce on the offense of uh, her service game. And then the second best server on the team is Liv Mogridge, who is out right now with a lower body injury. So Georgia Tech trying to rely on the other servers to, to put a run together. And Coach Cole challenging to see if there was net violation. Anything up top. Roby would be the it. closest culprit, but I'm not seeing it. What I'm seeing is incredible blocking discipline. This is what you train in. Coach Poole says he spends a lot of time with his team on the block. It's one of those things in club volleyball he thinks is overlooked a lot. So when they get new players, you spend a lot of time early on working on that block discipline, that penetration to get over but not touch the net. And you're seeing that. I like it. Challenge in the call on the court, which was in Florida State points. And the call is upheld 15 to 9. I think that may have been more of a challenge of hope than a challenge of conviction. And Michelle Collier with one timeout remaining. One challenge remaining. So 15 9 Seminoles. They seek to move ahead two sets to one. Their last loss was back in September the 16th when they were swept by Hawaii. Koenig just <laughs> levitating and putting it away. The athletic ability of Phelan coming in on a tight ball with a jump set on the money. You just put a dime out there on the set for the put away by Koenig. Yeah, Andre Koenig doesn't need every set to be perfect, but it doesn't help to have somebody as precise as Kenneth Phelan. Don't want to shortchange her dad. He played collegiate tennis for Arkansas, his mo her mom, of course. Former All-American for Chris Poole at Arkansas. Pancake by Bertolino. Dumped over by Pimentel. Good challenge at the net by Pierce. Here's Mendez. Florida State has been over every swing from the corners. Mendez off balance. Well, that was not an on-platform shot by Larissa Mendez, but a clever shot to give Georgia Tech the point. It definitely wasn't planned, so Suarez set that ball about five feet off. Florida State's block was up a little early, and that caused the off-speed shot by Mendez to sneak through. Lisa Mendez, 14 kills, leading the way for the Yellow Jackets. to serve. Ooh, and an ace. Might have stolen one there. Mendez says, Oi, Totobain, I'm coming at you with that competitive spirit. Look at you flashing your Portuguese. <laughs> I, I speak Portuguese mostly. Portuguese being? A little Spanish, mostly Spanish. Okay. Throw some Portuguese in there. Say not in sync on that middle attack. They get the block and the point. Not quite how Florida State drew it off, but too much pressure on the Yellow Jackets. And 
Guess who's coming back on the court? You have setter D'Amico. Georgia Tech really knowing that that 6-2 offense, a stronger blocking presence will help because Florida State is cruising offensively. Hitting 250 for the match, 241 for the set, and up six. Georgia Tech looks like Roby clipped the net. Georgia Tech is deep offensively. You have Harper. She's fearless. One thing when Harper goes up to swing, she's just going to rip it. And that takes a lot of pressure off the other hitters as you get tired throughout the match. Nice job, Harper, taking that swing. One thing we've seen is Georgia Tech hasn't gone as deep into the bench as they have their last couple of matches when they ran out 14 different players. Tightening things up a little bit, but still trailing here in the third. Yeah, between the All-Americans we've seen with Julia Bergman, Mariana Brambilla the last couple of years, it was obvious what lineup you were going with because you had two first-team All-Americans on the team, but right now Georgia Tech has recruited well after that success, and they can go deep into their bench and figure out a way to pull off a victory. Shelly Collier just makes it imagine with the absence of Mogridge, whom she said is kind of the glue of our team. And as you noted earlier, Georgia Tech scored a lot of points in rotation when Mogridge was serving, so you lose that element as well. 18-12 Florida State. And in control throughout this third set. Jump set, D'Amico to Bertolino off the top of the hands and down for the point. That was a great set. Nice contact from D'Amico going out to Bertolino, but with the three-hitter situation, it spreads the block. So it's not doesn't make the set obvious anymore, and that gives enough seam for Bertolino to work between. There's Patterson in to serve for Tech. Georgia Tech 14-2, 5-1 in the ACC. Lone loss was last Friday in a five-setter to Pittsburgh, which they took the first two sets. Of course, Pitt and Louisville matching up this weekend. That should be a beast of a matchup and a beast of a swing there. Connolly has found her rhythm, working all different shots. This one taking it line, just beautifully done. Harper not able to close it off. Just enough hope for Connolly to rip. Sydney Conley, five kills and a 500 clip. Roscovich plays it in. D'Amico, Bertolino, awkward angle. Kept airborne, Bertolino sends it deep. Rothman tools it for the point. You can tell that the size and athleticism from Florida State is wearing Georgia Tech down in the third. How was Georgia Tech able to, to negotiate that in the second? What have they gotten away from here in the third, Keelan? For Georgia Tech, you just have to have somebody step up and want to win the match for you because you see the communications dropped off. You have to look at your pin attackers. You're like, you can do it, so who's going to step up and really decide to take over? For Florida State, your pass is on. You watch both setters between Phelan and Droskovich. They are at the net running the offense. That creates that one-on-one -on -one situation or a seam to run this high-efficient offense. Stoppage here with the score, 2013. Aha. Uh -huh. And Philly Mawa, I believe, got blood on her uh, Libero jersey. And do a quick wardrobe change. And hence the stoppage. So I always pack the back up, Kim. <laughs> yeah. It's probably in her carry-on. You don't want to risk that yeah, being that in the That might have been the lost. uniform that uh, she planned on wearing Sunday versus Clemson. Pimentel <laughs> sets up Bertolino off the hands and up for a point. Bianca Bertolino knows it's her. She knows she's going to have to carry the load. And right there, you get a set. Given Bianca Bertolino her line shot a high off the hands, this is her favorite shot. She's been successful at it all career long. Keep going, keep feeding her. As men 
Hernandez comes back in to replace DeBico. And Suarez will serve it in for Georgia Tech. And at this point for the Seminoles, you don't need that middle attack because you come into the third set and now your pin attack from right side to outside is cruising. So whatever you get, go fast on your set, you're going to get a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. And there hasn't been much that's thrown Florida State off in this third set. Also a lot sharper from the service line. Off the beam. Snyder read well by the Jackets. Mendez. He got some great rallies in this third set and just short on by Bertolino. <laughs> I'm just thinking for Georgia Tech how frustrating it is to go against such a strong blocking team with the Seminoles. They're just owning the net, doing a great job, putting balls straight down, block to block. And timeout, Georgia Tech, 21-14 Florida State. Of course, Georgia Tech faced a fearsome blocking team last Friday at Pittsburgh. Uh, Florida State proving every bit the equal tonight. talked about the other marquee matchup in the ACC tonight Louisville and Pittsburgh and right now the Cardinals up two sets and in good shape in the third and again they have a lot of scoreboard watching for the Seminoles because if the Panthers do lose Florida State can claim the top of the ACC to its own pretty impressive Florida State with a rough preseason due to injury and now cruising through ACC play, lighting it up on all cylinders. And then ACC volleyball, there's no easy team. So you had NC State pulling off a major upset against the former second ranked Louisville, now six after that loss to NC State. So Florida State, it could be anybody's conference this year. Yeah. Seminoles have yet to face the Cardinals or Panthers. They'll travel to Louisville two weeks from tonight and then play host to Pittsburgh on Friday, November 3rd. Looking for their first win over a ranked opponent this season. And number 11, Georgia Tech, which has had to withstand some injuries, some reshuffling of their lineup. But they've had no answer to the size and athleticism of Florida State so far in this third set. Chris Poole's team four points away, moving ahead two sets to one. Tech just hitting 093 in this set. Pretty much sums up the frustration. Point Tech. It's pretty impressive that your freshman is leading the kill team in kills with 15 kills right now. Mendez coming up with her 15th, going to and off the block. And hitting 333 as well. And I think that's what's maybe most surprising is Florida State, like we said, they came in 14th in the ACC in opponent hitting percentage. So potent offensively, sometimes porous defensively, but they have held Georgia Tech to 161 for the match as they now make it 22-15. It's a block causing balls to slow down and then the transition offense, you just saw it right there, the transition kill. Florida State just looking like a top-ranked yeah. team trying to make their way into first place in ACC play. Another lingering skepticism college volleyball at large uh, had on the Seminoles' body of work. That may be diminishing tonight in Atlanta as the ace makes it 23-15. Of course, both teams have been used to playing five setters. And one thing about Georgia Tech staff, they're trying to figure out, and they do a great job trying to find a way to win. You see them mixing up players, trying to go 6-2, different middle, getting it going. Only another ace by Philly Mallow. 
Koenig has it blocked. Engeman. Kelly Engeman took her until the third set to appear tonight. Got her first career kill versus Virginia on Sunday, the junior from Minnesota. It took to the third set to come up with your first block as a team. Engelman, proud of that one. Just all of last season, recovered from a knee injury. 23-16, back to Snyder. Pushes it deep. Suarez. And does that paint the line? It does for Odine. It's all about building right now. You build confidence, you build momentum, you keep the passion going, and you need Otene to play. Right here, give a nice top spin to that catch that deep line. Otene a double-double already, 11 kills, 12 dings, but the service here makes it set point for the Seminoles. Seminoles really feeling confident in all aspects of the game. I think the block today has really helped a lot. Coach Poole knew that he needed to slow down the offense and the transition attacking game has been working. By the way, that block from uh, Engeman and Mendez a moment ago, Georgia Tech's first block of the match. That one sails toward the seeds, feeling unable to retrieve it. That's the game Georgia Tech needs. You need Otene. So you, what won the second set for you? It was the pin attack between Otene, Bertolino, and Mendez. Harper and D'Amico come on. 24-18. Florida State was up two sets to one. And Tully Jim last year on Georgia Tech before the Yellow Jackets rallied it. One and five behind an historic performance from the All-America, Julia Bergman. Koenig unable to put that away. Otene once again, but once again a block from Florida State. A fitting way to end that third set, 25-18 Florida State. So Florida State. And away we go with set number four. Almost an overpass. Michelle Kellier wanting double contact. But they'll get the point anyway in Bertolino. Bertolino was on Georgia Tech's Elite Eight team going to, to the regional finals. She can carry the offense if you allow her that nice tight set to get it in front of her to work the block. Preseason all ACC. Slot attack is it wide? It is. Florida State thought there was a touch. Now Chris Poole at least waited until the second point to brandish <laughs> the challenge card after he grabbed it on the first point of the third set. We'll see what the slow down replay shows. We saw Lewis right away. Such a high jumper going off one foot, that slide attack. She saw it. She thought she saw it, and we'll see it in the replay to see the hands on the block had movement for the touch. Engaman and Bertolino in the crosshairs with the jackets. Looked like there was a touch from Engaman. You've seen the fingers on the right hand of Engelman going up. I'm seeing movement. Yep. Yeah. As reviews go, this one a quicker one. I think they saw what we saw. It's always nice when it's obvious, right? <laughs> Instead of sitting here for five minutes going back and forth, multiple replays. As an official, though, does it offend your sensibilities when a review is so quick and they have to overturn the call? A touch is so fast. It's almost a compliment to how fast that attack happens. Okay. So you almost want to compliment the game of Lewis off the slide attack for power. Now you want to get it right. Don't take those personally. We are level at one. With no hesitation. Aaron swing from Mendez. 
Mendez was taking that swing to purposely go high into the hands, but she took it a little wide. Hands were not to be found. Koenig down the line with authority. The transition game for Florida State is clicking. So the block's getting a good setup, great defense around it by Rothman. And then when you need a kill, your power put away by Koenig is going down. Koenig up to eight kills. Also eight digs. As he searches for his sixth straight double-double. Potentially a third straight ACC Offensive Player of the Week award. Oh, Suarez into the seats, bumped over by Bertolino. Third attack looking to regroup Snyder. And that's a point for Florida State. Just impressive game we're seeing right now by Florida State. Outside attack, transition, right side attack. Georgia Tech wanting that block a little too much, catching the net violation. Just incredible game. You almost want to let the whole world know or the nation know, like the preseason losses for Florida State were due to injury, but they're back playing. Don't count them as you rank players with our rank teams with the RPI. Sometimes it helps to put a little bit of that record into context. Georgia Tech down 4-1-0 today. A little out of sync on the swing. Chance for the Seminoles to make it 5-1, and they will get it. For club volleyball, it's so important to develop that six rotation outside to now look at college ball. You have Rothman taking a swing out of the back row. Koenig can do it. And then all three pin attack for Georgia Tech can also do it. It's impressive. Snyder. Tries to go down the line, Pimentel covers it. Oh, today. Koenig. Dug away by O today. Now Mendez gets the point. Boy, Georgia Tech has had to earn everything it's gotten in the third set and here to begin the fourth. They say O'Keefe Gym is one of the hardest places to play in the nation, not only in the ACC. Georgia Tech's really going to have to rely on the seventh man advantage to give the team energy because this is a hard-fought match. Trying to get some energy from the service line from Bertolino. <laughs> Side out, Koenig. And that's the other thing. They're not letting... Georgia Tech get points off them when Bertolino is serving. That's four consecutive serves where Georgia Tech has not gotten the points off a Bertolino serve. And you almost want to be like, really? For Georgia yeah. Tech when you pass and transition out like that on Bianca, Bianca serve? Otene winds up and gets the points off the touch. <laughs> Michelle Collier had the Hancock. She was ready for the challenge card. And I think Chris Poole may do the same. You know, right away, the both blockers for a, between Snyder and Roby looked at their coach. Those are the two blockers went up and both shook their hands like, Coach, we didn't touch it. So Coach Poole reached over for the green challenge card. We were just fated to have a challenge one way or another. <laughs> right. 6 3 as it stands on the Georgia Tech point. This is actually the first time I actually looked at the score. It feels like it's like 12 10, you know, or something much further along because you can feel the stress in the room. Georgia Tech knows this Florida State team only needs one set to pull off this win. You don't want to fall behind 4 1 right off the rip in this fourth set. the left hand of Snyder. I don't think Roby was close enough. It's, it, it's one of those questions. Was that a field goal or was that straight off the pointer of um, index finger? It's hard to tell. Sometimes you see those replays with your heart. <laughs> yeah. Everybody Florida State fan watching, they're like, there's no touch. And Georgia Tech was like, 
Off the index finger. One thing Georgia Tech and Florida State fans can both agree on when it comes to replays, it was a fumble against Miami last week. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I think both fan bases can find consensus on that. Georgia Tech faces Miami on Sunday here at O'Keefe Gymnasium. Now Florida State heads to Clemson. From that angle, you don't see much finger movement, but even the body language. So right away, Snyder was the first one to go over to Coach Poole and say, Coach, I did not touch it. Go ahead, use your challenge card. So I wonder if that plays into the mind of the referee trying to make this call correct. Well, salesmanship. This is your best view right yeah, here. Let's see what we got. And the uh, replay continues here. That's a field goal. That's a no touch. Okay. So says Keely Evelyn. I'm right sure a lot of conflicting opinions, but as we know, there is only one that matters in a situation like this. But it's it just another illustration, regardless of the outcome of this challenge, Keely, of just how suffocating Georgia Tech, as, as suffocating Florida State's heights has been tonight as they search for answers without their middle blocker, Liv Bogridge. Ooh. And the call does stand. Just don't think there was enough conclusive evidence. And you can just feel all the Florida State fans yelling at home and then all the Georgia Tech fans at home cheering in this yeah. moment. It was so tight. We've been around this long enough to know there's a difference between a call reversed and a call that stands. Koenig steps into it and puts it away. Koenig says, thanks for that little break. My legs are fresh right now going up, making a power swing. And now Koenig up double digits with 10 kills. Georgia Tech as Mendez was able to get that off the outside edge of the block. Mendez, even though she's only a freshman, she plays with top players in Brazil. She can carry the load of an offense as well, going making good shots going into the middle blocker on that one. <laughs> Georgia Tech read that well, but too much strength on the swing from Roby. All the yes is right there. Kenna Feeling going forward, trusting her middle, Roby was going to arrive. Feeling if you're the future of this offense, Coach Poole will be smiling for three more years to come. Yeah, Georgia State looks to be in good center's hands. The second generation D1 volleyball player, Kenna Feeling. Got that to come in low. A layout dig by Rothman. Koning now cross court for the kill. And once again, Florida State. Putting its foot on the Jackets, 9-4 Seminoles, the timeout from the Yellow Jackets. Another sharp start, Florida State. And they've had three straight five setters. They don't want to make it a fourth. Up is a final, Louisville, a sweep of number eight Pittsburgh, which means a win tonight. And Florida State can leave O'Keefe Gymnasium all alone in first place in the ACC. Georgia Tech needing to come back here in the fourth. And of course, win the fifth. Should they do that, they will jump into second place at a mark of six and one. The trail of the Seminoles, nine four. See if they regroup out of the timeout. Mendez winds up, gets the point. That's where you have to go early on because right now, Florida State's block is camped on Otene. Mendez hitting to the right back corner, playing a hard shot on your freshman setter defender in Phelan. Smart job. Well, it just feels like Georgia Tech has not put a lot of pressure on Florida State from the service line, which is something that Michelle Collier talked about. 
couple of nice digs here. Oh, today. Does she get the point? She does. Bend some fingers back. Give Otene a 14th kill. And no argument by Roby in the middle. Players, Coach Poole got up from his bench looking around, and Roby says, yes, Coach, I touched it on the block. Sniped down the line. <laughs> wow. That was a chop by Roby. Just imagine you're Kenna Phelan. You've known Coach Poole since you were young, like right out of the womb, if Coach Poole says you've known each other. Then you come and you see all the hitters that you get to set to. You're like, where do I sign? Oh, Mendez smacks it for the point. That was an impressive swing by the freshman. Now a 19th kill and a career high for Larissa Mendez. This is why right side attackers are your highest money makers overseas because you always create that three hitter attack. Mendez ripping it from the back row. 19 kills and hitting 333. Previous high was 17, which she set in the last match versus Virginia in five. <laughs> there was nothing Georgia Tech could do about it. Rothman ripping. Oh, between Rothman and Koenig on the outside. How are you going to stop them? The only thing you can do right now if you're Georgia Tech is serve tougher. You have to take risks because a pass set attack, when the setter's up the net, it's going down. That was a detonation by Audrey Rothman. Left the Seminoles in kills when they played Georgia Tech here a year ago. Seminoles were swept in that regular season finale in Atlanta, but up 12-7 here in the fourth. Trying to make it a 7-0 start in the ACC for the first time since 2015. The Yellow Jackets have their work cut out for them. Gonna get the flying start. Pimentel with the dig. Popped over by Mendez. Oh, Pimentel! And we play on. Wow. Pimentel. One man rally extender. Georgia Tech thought it clipped hands. And they do indeed get the call. Oh, today rubbing her leg a little bit after that attack. She hit it a little flat, which was on purpose, trying to catch the hands, and she did off that back row attack. Let's take a look at it again. It looks like it just grazed that triple block. And an ace, but it caught it in between there on that deep serve by Suarez. When Suarez is back to serve, that was a fantastic ace. You just look hopeful for Georgia Tech. A three-hitter situation. Mendez back in the front row. It's a bitter, bigger block to go against Rothman on the outside. Half dozen aces for the Jackets. Pushed across, Bertolino! <laughs> oh. The push set by Suarez. She's going into the bench, leaning back over to the stands, getting that deep push, and Bianca Bertolino just ready for it, cutting that ball inside. That was pinpoint from the freshman. Makes it 12-10 Seminoles. is all Georgia Tech can get. That was a good little run by Suarez on the service line. But if you look across the net, you every time you go against a strong block, so you really have to get a pass because you can't afford Florida State just to camp on one attacker. And the Gayona with the serve for the Seminoles. Toledo just kept chipping away. Oh. Point Tech. Andy, pure determination right now. Bertolino taking three rips in a row, just going power on the third with a little help from Mendez at the net. 
you buy the third jump, you throw finesse out the window. That's out the gym. Straight strength from the junior. Bertolino, another double-double, 12 points, 10 digs. You know today, both with double-doubles tonight. Wow, what a oh. bump set by Droskovic. Incredible. And it leads to the Florida State point. Droskovic said, I don't really care where this ball going. I'm giving the ball to Koenig on the money. And then Koenig inside, put away shot. Oh, just called off Snyder. What might that do for the tilt of this set? Here's Droskovic again. Snyder with the left hand. Mendez off the hands for a point. You know, we've talked about Kenna Phelan as the setter of the future for Florida State. She has certainly flashed an eye for the setter of the present, Jelly Troskovic. I think still people here in O'Keefe in awe of that bump set she had. I'm still doing the replay in my head. How pretty was that? There has been no answer for Snyder all night long, pounding it down the line. Snyder, nine kills. Florida State up three. As a freshman, this, this is Snyder's first time playing in O'Keefe Gym and just fearless, taking rips on that right side. We've said O'Keefe Gymnasium can be notoriously noisy, but the best way you take some decibels out of it, you get in the lead. Set with a rare set up the middle. And they get the side out from Pierce. As a setter, when you know you have to go to your middle for Pierce, you would if you're Suarez, you was like Pierce now, and Pierce showed up. Oh my gosh. Uh, you can see it coming from a mile <laughs> away. Koenig. The beautiful set pop, and then the ball. A lot of times people think you have to set a go low, but it's all about the dropping point to give angles for your hitter. So great low pop out of your hands, and then Koenig working her shot. Now offensively, cutie, this is the type of offense that we've seen from Florida State all season long. They're hitting 500. Rudy Tuck and able to get one off the slide. They change the pace, lay out by Pimentel. Mendez from the back, that's covered. That should be a Georgia Tech point. It finally is whistled. Tech point. So it was a pass set, and then Roby caught the top powder part of her fingertips, and then Rothman got the fourth touch trying to clear the ball over the net. Tolino with another one. And Jordan Tech cuts it to one. Great job, Suora, setting Pierce early on. That was just enough hold for Roby to hold with Pierce to give Bertolino the seam. And they've got Otene on the service line. Rothman, dog by Pimentel. Suarez pops it up. Otene pops it over. Transition ball for the Seminoles as they go to Rothman again. Oh, today ties us at 16. Incredible step up play by Otene. Getting a little ankle or something's going on with her lower body right now, but her heart is so locked in. Come up with this back row shot. Just pure power well, straight that was, down. That was majestic and that had some malice to it. Tamara O today, 16 kills to go along with 18 digs. Georgia Tech's only lead in this fourth set was 1-0. Suarez tries to go over on two. Oh, Pimentel bumped over by Bertolino. Can Georgia kick get reorganized? Overpass and Pierce hammers it down, and O'Keefe is on its feet. 
This might be the loudest O'Keefe has been tonight. The hustle. And then the opportunistic strike by Pierce. 17-16, Jackets, Florida State calls time. That is the type of energy you will need because Florida State's not backing down. Georgia Tech needs their entire fan support right now to stay in this match. It's turned into a 4-0 Georgia Tech run. And for the first time since it was 1-0, the Yellow Jackets in the lead. And they have O'Keefe Gymnasium ratcheting up the decibels again. And Georgia Tech's defense has really come alive here as they were down early in this fourth set. And just not as much efficiency from the outsides from Florida State. And that, that's kind of been the key of this rally. You can see that Georgia Tech's implementing the idea. If you don't have a shot, you hit it right back to take the setter out of the offense to make Florida State setter take the first ball. That means you can't set your middle. So it allows that second ball opportunity to be an out of system ball. And then Georgia Tech does a much better job setting up their defense. Right now, I think the service game by Otene has really stepped up, creating those solid runs. And then collectively together, Georgia Tech's relying on their experience to stay together and continue to fight. Well, this Georgia Tech team leads the ACC in digs per set. They've had some big digs to dig themselves out of a four set hole. And Otene once again back to the service line. Suarez, high across to Bertolino for the point. And it's a 5-0 tech run. Coach Collier getting a little high five after that Bertolino kill walking out of bounds. Yes, Georgia Tech just cruising with their strength and momentum. Relying, almost like riding a wave of momentum right now. Georgia Tech was down five, two separate occasions in the fourth, now up two. Oh, today, lays it back up. Bear Tolino. Great dig by Koenig. Oh, and Georgia Tech, Bear Tolino with the change of pace. Even Michelle Collier can't believe it. 19-16. That was a yes, you have to respect. I look like I'm gonna just hit it and then drop it with a finesse shot short. And another Florida State timeout. Georgia Tech found itself on the brink here. Wow. It was 12 to seven Florida State, but since then Georgia Tech has ripped off six in a row, fighting to keep this game alive. It's 1916 Jackets. And you can see it's, it's almost like deja vu of the second set. So this pin attack, you got Mendez swinging out of the back row. Bertolino stepping up her power game and then always are relying on Otene's back row attack. Collectively, as, an, as a whole, Georgia Tech needs to continue just to believe that they can do this because this Florida State block, if they get confident, they're going to put balls yeah. down. Yeah, Florida State still without a block in this fourth set after they had 11 in the first three. And so that element of Chris Poole's defense has been absent here in the fourth set. Had to hurt them when they were leading 12 7, but boy, trying to subdue this Georgia Tech rally. Sorely in need of something. Trying to find a spark here. And you look across at the offense, you have Suarez in the front row. That's the shorter blocker for Georgia Tech. Rothman's on your outside. If you get a pass, you know Pierce is going to hold with Roby in the middle. So you've got to feed Rothman the ball. Conan leads the way with 12 kills for Florida State. Oh, as they go Ooh. quick. And it was Roby. Up high, down hard, stop the 6-0 Georgia Tech run. All oh, the yeses right there, feeling. When you're slightly out of system, you saw 
Pierce release on that. That's the time you force back your middle. Beautifully done. Robey was part of an Elite Eight team with Oregon last season. Wow! Coming from behind. It was Pierce. On the go behind. And Tech first to 20. You said Roby's from Oregon, and guess what? I'm a transfer from Texas. <laughs> Coming through with that slide attack kill is Pierce. And DeAndra Pierce, 10 kills in the win versus Virginia on Sunday. She's got five. Back set, pushed over. Patterson laying out. Bear Toledo! Point tech. This is high level stuff from Bianca Bertolino, almost winning Georgia Tech. The back bump set by your middle, Engelman to put one on the money. That's what saved the play, and Bertolino feeling her power today. Wow, 21-17, work certainly not done. Into the net from Patterson. Sometimes that is all it takes. And we'll see if Florida State can capitalize. It's a good time right away if you can get Mendez a back row attack just to show that you can produce offense back there. Jelly Droskovic, by the way, leads FSU in aces. Up for Bertolino. Dug out by Philly Mawa. Bertolino once more. Catches hands, it does. Up official had a Georgia Tech point. And they will convene as we get another look. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tongue out like Jordan, but will the point stand? It is Georgia Tech ball and Georgia Tech point. So Coach Poole really asking because the line judge on the deep line called it out. The line judge on the far side called the ball in because it was inside the court. So interesting what was communicated in that moment. Well, was there a, so, so evidently there wasn't a touch. It was just a matter of was ball in or ball out. And Chris Poole is going to go to the challenge card. I don't think Co Coach Poole realized he just got a yellow card as well <laughs> as he reaches for his green challenge card. So certainly he's within his right, Keeley, to ask for a review if one official had it out, one official had it in, and he had asked for a, a, a gathering like a of the officials, yeah, just to sort it out. And certainly that's not the end-all, be-all of the point. You can certainly go to the challenge and the replay review. And we'll see if Florida State can have a fourth successful challenge of the night. You're right, Andy, that is the sequence. So first you fight to get the communication between the line judge and the up official on point. So Coach Poole was like, can you talk to the line judge? And that yeah. communication then did happen, and it was still called for the point for Georgia Tech, as then Coach Poole decided to reach for his green challenge card. Was it in or was it out? Did it catch the corner there? I'm thinking that ball was out. I'm it caught that so little too. dash. Yeah. <laughs> That's out of bounds. Yeah, I think this one might be coming back. 22-18. It could go from a four-point tech lead to a two-point lead. And obviously, the crowd at O'Keefe reacting to uh, Coach Poole's argument of the initial call and wanted to make sure all the, the officials were on the same wavelength and then going for the challenge but like you said the sequence is fine and i think the up official was waiting for coach Poole to grab the green card like go ahead you you can challenge yeah. it 
quit arguing with me in a moment. Go ahead and grab your, grab your green card. Don't know if this will give us a better angle than the one we just saw, but yeah. yeah it looks like pretty clearly there was some space between the ball and the white. Correct. Of course, Bianca Bertolino has been so dialed in, Keely, in this four set. You almost think that she's going to dot every line whenever she's winding up. Uh, Bianca Bertolino, like we had said, almost single-handedly wheeling Georgia Tech back into this. Such power and strength, and right now this serve-receive rotation is really what you need to get a stick a pass. And Coach Collier might challenge a touch off this block and might be going using her challenge <laughs> card. And the call, it appears, will be overturned. <laughs> but you're right, will Michelle use her challenge for a touch? In which case, we will witness the rare double challenge. Because <laughs> again, they're only challenging whether the ball was in or out, not whether it got touched. Now, did Michelle use her challenge? It looked like they were about to announce the outcome of the review. Um, from the looks of it, it looks like a, a bounce off the net. It wasn't a blocker yeah. touch and then sailing that ball long. Did you see that pinky wiggle a little bit from Snyder? Right pinky? I'm thinking of the angle that the ball comes at. This probably will be our yeah. best view, but it looks like it was a bounce yeah. a little too far to her right for that to be a touch off any top of her fingers. Hands, forearms all look clean up top of the net. might have just gotten one more look at it. Challenge or no challenge from Michelle, so it will be Florida State point. And that's a big swing here, Keeley. <laughs> and now Coach Collier is reaching for her challenge card to, to ask about the touch off the block. We have a challenge of a challenge of a challenge. Well, we've seen some high-level volleyball. I think a lot of you would have the sentiment, you don't want to see this match end. <laughs> <laughs> this is my first double challenge ever. I am. On the same play. So we're on the opposite side of the court is our teams. And so we're unable to eavesdrop on what specifically the conversation was to prompt the challenge for Michelle if she was looking for a block touch, whether it was a net violation from the angles that we got. It didn't appear as it caught any hands. You know what I would do if I was Coach Collier? I would have said, hey, it was a block touch, uh, excuse me, a, a net violation from, from a previous block and make them review the whole play, oh hoping to get a block, some, a block net violation somewhere. <laughs> Just when you think you've seen it all, a challenge of a challenge. And now it's 21-19 Florida State pending the review. And the tight net angle. So we'd never look to see if the body touched the net. Like maybe the likes of Snyder coming up. Like the tight net angle might be able to show some type of hope for Georgia Tech on this double challenge call. Well, let's see. But we have an overturn of the overturn.
this, this is, is good. unbelievable. I feel like I'm watching Netflix. Wow. So the ball did land out of bounds, but there was a forearm touch on Snyder. You can see the gesture there. So the call got overturned, and then the overturn got overturned. Oh, that and that violation. That yeah, on the got net. It. Yep. We were looking for the touch. <laughs> so it's 22-18 after all. And Georgia Tech gets the point, 23-18. What a turn of events right now. I think the double challenge call, because the first challenge, you're like, oh no, for, for uh, Georgia Tech, Florida State sneak, sneaking away with momentum, and then the Coach Collier using the double challenge was everything. Long set points. Florida State has just not been in rhythm on its serve receive, and things have unraveled on the Seminoles after they were up five midway through the second, the uh, fourth set. 25-18, Seminoles in the third. Can these teams each play fourth consecutive five-setter in the ACC? Can Bertolino finish it off? It is long. We got a touch oh, over we here. Got a touch. <laughs> and that'll do it. So Keely, how about we start off the fifth? Otene steps into it. The dig by Philly Mawa. Here's Koenig. Long. Andy, you called it though. The ball was going to Koenig. You need that leadership on the court in the fifth set. No other place was that ball going. Koenig leads the Seminoles a dozen kills tonight, hitting 212. Calls everybody off. Block. Mendez. Engelman was there as well. Well, Georgia Tech only had one block all night, but that makes it two zip. And that makes a Florida State timeout. Incredible job. Just attention to detail. Recognizing Koenig was going to get that other set. You had Mendez full set up on it. So 2 0 start by Georgia Tech. Looking to protect. Florida State calls timeout, trying to stunt a 2-0 start to the fifth for Georgia Tech. Seminoles are up two cents to one and leading 16-13 in the fourth. Since then, Tech has won 14 Whoa. of the last 17, making 15 of 18. And the ACC leader in aces rips another one, Bianca Bertolino. Let's go, going up with that heavy top spin, dropping it at the most insane time Ooh. that she needs in the fifth set. Another ace, Bertolino dialed in from the back. When you watch the game of Bertolino, she is steady the entire match. And this is why her demeanor pays off. Fifth set, pressure on Bertolino coming up with back-to-back -back aces. Florida State timeout, and this roof is about to bust at O'Keefe. So now going back to the fourth set, it's a 16-3 Georgia Tech run. And I know, you know, runs don't necessarily cover the end of one set and the beginning of, a, of another. But still, for a Florida State team that looked in control in that fourth set after winning uh, the third set, Keeley, without much sweat, for Georgia Tech to turn that around and win 16 of the last 19 points just shows the, the fortitude of this number 11 team in the nation. And you watch the first ball contact. You got Georgia Tech on the service line. The serve receipt pass for Florida State is dropping off. I think Georgia Tech right now feeling confident, and it really starts with Bianca Bertolino, what she's been able to do already. Right, she has carried and put this team on her shoulders here. And Florida State now out of timeouts. Blistering serves by Bertolino. Timeout, slower down. 
That's what Florida State's hoping. And that's exactly what happens. Can't argue with a 4-0 start, but that was desperately needed by the Seminoles, and now it's their turn to go to work. The last thing the Seminoles needed was another run, so you are right, Andy. They were just holding their breath, hoping that timeout would ice the server. The freshman, Kylie and Finimawa. Otene, does she get a touch? No. That was the right shot. She looked like she was going outside, and then Otene turned that ball line, just catching a little bit out of bounds, turning it too far left. Like Kathleen Philomau, the freshman. She is betraying no nerves back there. Wow! Point tech, Otene, brought the smoke. This is the advantage of being in the front row with Mendez. The middle, Roby, had to hold just in case Mendez was about to get set. That caused the seam as Suarez leaned back and dished it out to Otene. It's going to cost some splinters. Back set, Snyder, cross court, and the point. That is a shot that a right side attacker perfects. That deep corner, because defenders have to crisscross on it. There's no defense that shifts over to that corner to defend. Great shot, Snyder. Five three jackets, and the Under Armour All-American freshman, Kendall Phelan, ready to serve. Had to reach back for it. Koenig. And point, Florida State. 5 4. No surprise, Andre Koenig in the crosshairs. Great job, Koenig going high into the hands. Pierce gets a really nice touch. That ball's high enough off the block, but you see Pierce just waiting for a defender to play it. Great set delivery by Phelan, and then just not enough for the defender to make a second move. Tech started the fifth set up 4-0 for the last five points to the Seminoles. Otene tried to crack one cross court. Feeling with a back set. Otene blocked and we're tied. What a response by the Seminoles. Pure discipline and penetration. If you watch these blockers for Florida State, they are over the net and the ball is can't even sneak through if it would try. Great penetration on that, Roby. And now Georgia Tech's turn to call timeout. Florida State had not had a block in the fourth set and their first one of the fifth, not to sit by. This is a great service game. You're seeing by Phelan right now, creating that run causing that ball to go right to Otene on the serve-receive pattern, getting her out of her rhythm for that approach. Yeah, certainly got Georgia Tech out of sorts here as Michelle Collier tries to settle down her charges, trying to extend the win streak in the series to eight, 60th all-time meeting tonight between the Jackets and Seminoles, and it has been a fun one. This is what you train for in your offseason, for moments like this, going head-to-head -head with a top-ranked team, fighting hard for victory, staying together as a team. The Florida State battle-tested in this seven-match win streak. Trying to make it four straight, five-set wins in a row. So you knew, a new and early deficit would now rattle them. This run has been started at the service line by the freshman Phelan and Philly Mawa. And that one lost. So both timeouts proven fruitful for Chris Poole and Michelle Collier in icing the server. <laughs> yes, Andy, you called it right there. Two timeouts, two miss serves right after the timeout. Mendez now to serve. We'll go over on two, and there was a net violation. Take the point. Seven-five jackets. 
Koenig is trying to reload quickly. I'm glad we're getting this replay. Yep, yeah, yes, the there was that did hit antenna. Wow, dumped over by Roby. Pure respect right there. You saw defenders back for the hard shot by Roby. And Suarez not able to make the forward move because her, her shoulders were back. Watch off blocker Suarez as Georgia Tech center not able to make that run forward. Can we just sit back, Healy, and admire the fact we're playing a competitive white knuckle fifth set. We've got two freshman servers, or setters rather. Beautiful. Oh, today's been dealing. <laughs> oh, Andy, that was a change of a play in the serve receipt pattern, bringing Otene inside. It's a 32 set in Atlanta. They call it a rip set. Nice ball inside. That caused the block not just to camp out at the antenna. Nice change of play by Georgia Tech. Well, flip signs, 8 6 Georgia Tech. Just trying to grind and gut it out without their middle blocker, Liv Bodridge. Down two cents to one and trailing 16-13 in the fourth. Yellow Jackets force the fifth. Comes down to a 4-0 start in the fifth. Florida State tied it at five. Now 8-6 Yellow Jackets and back to serve for Otene. Bertolino steps into it. Pimentel another dig. Rothman tools the block. Rothman was just waiting for a tight set to go into the hands of Suarez, Georgia Tech setter and shorter blocker. Now this is one of those matches, Keely. You can feel your heartbeat in your ears. 8-7, <laughs> yeah. Georgia Tech. For Georgia Tech, you almost want to see another Pierce slide attack. You're probably going to rely on your pin, pin attack with Bertolino on the outside. And another service here. That's the second of the set for Florida State. Wow, that was a big one right there, putting Georgia Tech up by two late in the fifth. Service here is 12 for Tech, and that's a 10 for Florida State, but... That one comes at an inopportune time. There's Patterson to serve for Tech. The matchup is still Rothman against Suarez, the outside hitter for Florida State against Georgia's Tech setter. Oh. <laughs> Chopped straight down by Lewis. Yes, Lewis, ACC Volleyball. This is a top middle in the nation. Lewis with her 10-8 jump just thumps it through the seam. 10-10, excuse me. That was as emphatic a middle kill as we've seen tonight. And it brings the Seminoles within one. Droskovic the serve. Suarez, a little off balance. Bertolino doesn't matter. Point 10. Suarez to drop down and get her hand on the ball. That saved the play right there, delivering out a low flat set out to Bianca Bertolino. Watch how Lehman back off of one foot, dishes a ball. Bertolino with the kill team. 55 assists for the freshman, Eloise Suarez. And back to serve. They go quick again. And clinical finish from Lewis. That's what you want to pass on the memo to Florida State. Every set you won, you get your middle so much involved. That's been the killer part of the offense. Nice to see Lewis getting some attacks going in the fifth set. Lewis second in the nation in hitting percentage. Eight kills for her, 350 for the match. Gayona off the bench and ready to serve. Snyder. And that one is outside. Point tech. Snyder was hoping to find hands on that tip shot, hoping that Bertolino's fingers were going to be there. Bertolino dropped her hands, made the move, and Snyder tipped out of bounds. Chris Poole, does he want a challenge? And it looks like that will be called for. Well, just knowing how efficient Maddie Snyder has been from that right side, Georgia Tech did seem to drop hands. But I think challenging whether there was a net violation. 
I am highly entertained right now. <laughs> this is such good volleyball coming at you. Build the swings by Lewis. The fight back for, as a team defensively from Georgia Tech, just incredible. Well, you're like in the middle of Gladiator. Are you not entertained, <laughs> Keely Evelyn? Yeah. Was there a net violation on the Jackets here? We'll let it play out. This side, so we'll get a good look at it. So you see, there was net motion. So did it happen early on? I'm seeing the little net motion on this swing early on to cause the vibration of the net. And then watch how smart Bertolino recognized it to tip out of bounds, drops her hand, said Ooh. no thanks. But did her left arm touch it? That's what the referee seeing. But I, I did not see a net violation. At least at that speed. And I will, we have seen back-to-back -back challenges. And that the fourth set. Chris Poole challenged an out call. Michelle Collier challenged a net violation. And here challenging whether there was a net violation. Now Bertolino call on the court. Georgia Tech points to 11-9 as it stands. When we come on level terms, pending the review. Coach Poole's not going home with the challenge card. Nope. So you got to use them. Can't take it to Clemson with them on Sunday. How smart was Bertolino with the hand drop to get this call to stand? Nice job, Bertolino. That was nicely done on the block. Sometimes it's what you do, and in some moments, it's what you don't do. And it'll be Bertolino to serve. Remember, she was ripping from the service line to begin this fifth at Tech up 4-0. On the line again with Tech up 11-9. Oh, but she sends it into the net. <laughs> still a game, guys, still a game. This is better than any show I've been watching lately. <laughs> right here, tune in for some ACC volleyball. Boy, that might be the little daylight that Florida State needs. And now it's Billy Mawa. Otene finds the seam. Jackets get the side out right back. This is the game of Bertolino that's so impressive. She misses a serve, but then sticks a pass at the net. Suarez going flat outside. Otene through the block. Tamara Otene, 19 kills. Speaking of sticking bumps, Koenig. But Bertolino is there with the dig. Otene! It was long. Michelle Collier can't take her challenge card with her to Sunday. And she will use it here. Interesting moment. So Coach Collier reaching for her challenge card. Otene shaking her off, said, no, Coach, I think I hit it long. Coach Collier still saying I'm going to use it. Twelve eleven. Call on the court, like we said, was long. We'll see if there might have been a graze of the finger off that swing by Bertolino. Now, Florida State showing, uh, you know, whatever skepticism they might have had the rest of the ACC about their start. They are showing they will be a force. Once again, it is Snyder. And Specifically, that right hand. Is this a finger bend? Actually, I do off the second finger on the first shot, but this might be the better angle. Wow. I think you got it. Right? Even, I don't even think Otene thought she got the touch but the video actually looks like there might have been a touch between the first two fingers. Yeah, it looks like that middle finger of Snyder. But again, is, it is the evidence definitive? Is what we are determining here. In the Demetra Keeley Evelyn, great to have you with us tonight from O'Keefe Gymnasium. Georgia Tech and Florida State battling into a fifth set, fourth consecutive match, both teams. And played into a fifth.
Georgia Tech needed to rescue itself down two sets to one. 25-18, they took the fourth. Roar into life late. Jumped out to a 4-0 lead to begin the fourth, or the fifth rather. FSU tied it at five. Georgia Tech clinging into the lead here in the deciding set. Is it a time to regroup, get your offense going, identify what's going on over there? For Florida State, you can see them relying on their pin attack again, and you just want to send out the memo, hey guys, go to your middle. It works a lot. Yeah, it, it is interesting though that they seem to have strayed from that, uh, from the four set on. As hearts continue to race around O'Keefe Gymnasium, finishing up this review. You almost want to go down in the huddle and just be like, hey, Snyder, did you touch it? Because that's how close it is. You almost have to ask the blocker if it grazed your finger. Well, given where we are in the match, she'd never tell, and we couldn't blame her. No chance I would tell either. Headset is coming off. Will the call stand, or will it be overturned? Call on the court, Florida State point. Will stand FSU the point. Just don't think there was enough definitively to overturn it. You might have seen a little waggle of that finger from Snyder, but again, it's got to rise to the level of, of incontrovertible evidence. There just wasn't enough there, and it was a good, long, thorough review. So 12 11 now. Thielen sends it over. Popped up, Pierce gets the point. Pierce taking that overpass and saying I can take care of it as well. Great play, that's a huge play. Nice try to defense on that by Phelan, but just not enough for that overpass to stay on your side. Fisher in with Mendez to serve, 13-11 Tech. Oh, great touch on that tight set feeling, setting up Roby. For me, the best setters that exist are middle setters. If you can feel your middle, there's something special about you, and Phelan has it. Just a touch, knowing how high to pop any ball, one hand, two hands, forcing the ball off the net. I am loving the game, and I'm going to enjoy calling matches that Phelan's playing. Time call. Is there a challenge initiated? I believe there was. So Georgia Tech challenging for a net violation. 13-12 Georgia Tech, Florida State to serve, but another review here. <laughs> As the suspense only thickens more. For Georgia Tech, you just have to be like, don't set your middle. And then for Florida State, you're like, Go ahead and just only set your middle. You're getting killed every single time in this set, every time you give your ball to your middle. Ooh. Oh, on the um, backside. I was about to say a different word. But the backside, as you can see, feeling coming down. She makes a beautifully athletic save with the right hand, but you'll see her backside just catch it as she falls. It'll catch the bottom of the net. Oh, maybe it wasn't. What? On the other angle? It's all about angles. This is why I have to learn camera angles. This angle doesn't show net at all. By the way, Keely, these teams have traded points since it was 7-5 So they have traded the last 13 points. Because on the previous angle looked like a net violation. This angle looks like no net violation, but it's interesting how that can be on both angles. Yeah, we'll get our call here very shortly. And another momentous review. <laughs> call stands. Still 13-12. So athletic. Yeah. That just shows, yeah, you're right, just the, the agility and the sense of space in the moment. 
for the freshman Kenneth Phelan trying to urge her team on. 13-12. Seminoles trying to bring this on level terms. Pony to serve. Suarez. Oh, today. Dug out by Philly Mawa. And now Rothman. P. Mentel can't track it down, and we're tied at 13. Great comeback play, and it's been the game of Phelan. Phelan loves to get her middles going and then can set the pin attack. Georgia Tech snuck in on their defense, and then when the ball hit, Long not able to recover. So for the first time, Florida State gets back-to-back -back points, and we're tied at 13. Florida State, probably Ward has not traveled down to that huddle. They've got more impressive matters at hand, but with Pittsburgh's lost to Louisville tonight. A win for the Seminoles to move them into first place by themselves in the ACC. Georgia Tech trying to protect the home court and with the win moved to second place at 6-1. In college volleyball, there's two ranking systems. The ABA, ABCA coaches poll, which is like a vote, and then RPI is a peer ranking system based on your wins and losses. Florida State voting-wise, if they're playing like they're playing in the future, they're definitely going to be receiving votes to oh, get, yeah. right, get back in the top 25. There is nothing like a road win over a ranked team, in this case, number 11 in the nation, where you plant your flag. FSU took sets one and three, Georgia Tech two and four. And remember, this set began 4 0, Georgia Tech. FSU has not led in this fifth set. They have an opportunity here. Otene knows at this point, rides on her shoulders. Outside hitter for Georgia Tech. You're going to see that ball. Good pass. If she gets it, it's going to be her ball to take. Koenig. Otene long, and it's match point for Florida State. Wipe up that floor and take a little time off. Great, that was a great serve by Koenig going right up the line to Otene to put pressure on her on the service seat ball first and then cause that ball to go high. Suarez trying to make a late read on that set. Three straight points by FSU. Going to be a fourth straight five set win for the Seminoles. Otene oh, oh, oh. says let's play some more. Bertolino says, let me take half the court on this serve receive pattern. I'll stick a pass and then Otene going inside on the beautifully placed inside set by Suarez. Off the outside edge of Roby's hand. Tomorrow, Otene, a second straight 2020 match. That's a 20th kill, 21 digs. She had 20 and 20 in the five setter versus Virginia. And here she is to serve. Drops it down low. Thielen pushes it up. Rothman kept up by Otene. Suarez feeding Bear to Lino. And now it's Tech's turn for match point. Otene with the one-handed defensive save. Save the play, leaning back just when you thought the ball was going to go down. Otene reaches back, making the play, and then the power attack right there. Save the play. Good job, Otene. That's some team play in Bianca Bertolino just waiting for her power shot. Two digs in a row. Oh, today's defense delivering, and she will deliver the serve. Oh, watch out. It'll be pushed over by Philly Mawa. Suarez to Bertolino. Bumped over. We play on. Bertolino, and that'll do it. Georgia Tech comes from behind on its home floor and just about blows the roof off O'Keefe Gymnasium tonight. The final in set five, Tech 16.